So I think today we're gonna go chase rockfish. My goal was always, since I was a little boy, uh, was to just come to Alaska. There is so much other bycatch you can catch. Oh, there's another one. Double. Holy bait. We're gonna go ahead and send them down and see what comes up. This little spinning reel's taken a beating the last couple days. Woof. That is a big yeah. one. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo. All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. View, dude, that doesn't suck. It's amazing how much wildlife is actually. I mean, you just look at how much land and foliage. How big. And, I mean, like when people ask me about Alaska, big. Everything. Everything's big. The mountains are big. The waterfalls are big. The fish are big. I mean, this is a place that gets under your skin and makes you want to come back year after year. You know, after just a couple of days here in Alaska, we've already seen a lot. We've caught some awesome fish. We've had a bunch of laughs. Now, we wake up and we're right on the fishing grounds. Time is everything when it comes to fishing. Andy and Nick have this unique little spot called the Ashton Lodge. So Port Ashton Lodge is uh, built on the old Port Ashton cannery. Wonderful cooking facilities, uh, sleeping facilities. I mean, it's really an experience that adds to just going fishing. And it takes that 70 mile run out of the equation. So I think today we're gonna go chase rockfish. The goal for this part of the trip was some variety. You know, a lot of these places will hold a mixed bag of lingcod, of halibut, of rockfish, and that's what we wanted to go check out next. So we're we doing, uh, what, rockfish and lings today? Yeah, I think that's the plan. We'll uh, head out to uh, Latouse Passage. And... I came across Ali, it was probably in, he could probably figure it out better, but it was in the early 2000s. How far is the run from here? Uh, what is it, about a half hour or something half like that? Half hour. Oh, that's close. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've known Nick as long as I've known Andy now. Nick is always super cool, super mellow. Nick's the kind of guy that would tell you, hey, the boat's sinking. We need to get off pretty soon, probably. Oop, I just had one as soon as I hit the bottom. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. See if we can get three on at once. Oh, oh, oh yellow light. look at that. Whoa. Nice. Beautiful. Yellow eye, huh? Yep. That was a salmon that he barfed up. They just have little, like, bristles in their Look mouth. at that. So rad. So rad. The yellow-eyed rockfish. I've seen these pictures of these big, vibrant-looking rockfish that, you know, resemble a grouper in a lot of ways, but are totally different in others. Oh, wow, that's cool. All right, I'm going to throw this guy on the box. Let's put, them yeah, on ice. let's put them on ice. So we're in Seward, Alaska. Seward, Alaska is about a two and a half hour, three hour drive south uh, of Anchorage. We have uh, the North Gulf Coast. We tend to spend a lot of time fishing in that area. It's, it's a dynamic area. There's a lot of fishing opportunities there. There's a very shallow water fishing for halibut. Oh, there you go. He's hooked up. That one hit right when I retrieved it and he hit it right when I hit the bottom. Yeah, he did it. A little faster retrieves getting them now. That's a good fish right here. It might be a halibut. Really good fish. Is he peeling line? Oh, it's peeling it. Oh, he got a halibut. <laughs> to get here at this time when we can fish in under 100 feet of water and catch halibut between 50 and 200 pounds, there's just no better time to be fishing here. Oh, there's another one. Double. Hooked up. Double. Double. This spot sucks. <laughs> this spot sucks, says Ali. Got color. Looks like a flounder. Halibut. Hell I mean, it. a halibut. I keep saying nice flounder. Nice one, too. Here, let's get this one up together. Look at him all tore up on his tail. Yeah. 
Maybe a link hod grabbed him. And yeah, did you feel a big pull right, right at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there comes a linger. Beauty. Look at that. Yeah, That's a nice up. fish. He's got this one. Oh, he's yeah. got it. This is just as Alaskan as it gets, man. All we need is a salmon in the picture. So cool. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot. Fastest, cleanest, smartest. The only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design. Crafted by experience and by BDOutdoors.com. Yellow eye, little guy. For the rockfish fishing that we have up here, um, we have a variety. We have both pelagic and non pelagic fish. That one, look how vibrant that one. one is. Oh, he's cool. Uh, the pelagic fish are kind of suspended in the water column. Pelagic, much like a tuna, is a pelagic fish. Uh, so they'll they'll transport, they'll move, uh, they'll find different locations. Another old one, see the black on the fins? Yeah. Rockfish for me is kind of a new discovery. I mean, my whole life I've been fishing and I've been really, really obsessed with chasing the bigger pelagic fish, the yellowtails, the tuna, the marlin, whatever. And because of that, you know, I've, o I've overlooked this awesome fish, but just like everything else in Alaska, it's a lot bigger and there's more of them. And this is a pink salmon we caught uh, yesterday at the Port Aston Lodge, just sitting on the dock. Holy bait. Now bait like that, you don't want to bridle? You could, it's just not necessary. We're gonna go ahead and send them down and See what comes up. With the cold water, these fish didn't want to have to work hard to get to the bait. They want the bait either presented to them right there, hit them right on the head. They're going to put maybe some salmon carcasses or something down. Not moving them fast like I'm used to back home, you know, trying to get a reaction bite, but just a slow up and down action. Let that bait come up and flutter back down. Up, flutter back down. Oh, there we go. Woof! That a is a big Golly. one. Yep. That's gonna be Look at the size of that thing. Wow. That's a stud. Yeah. If those things aren't sea monsters, I don't know what it is, you know? Look at everything. That's what we call them dragons. They're so cool. In our rock fishing, there is kind of our king of the reef, and it's not the halibut. For us, it's the lingcod, you know? And down where we're at, a big lingcod's 25 pounds. Again, here in Alaska, a 25 pound lingcod's barely legal. You know, nobody's even batting an eye until you're bringing one in that's a 60 pounder. That's something that guys get excited about. And these things will go all the yeah. way to 80 pounds. That's a nice fish. Yeah, sweet. Yep. So rad. That thing is heavy too. It is, a, it's a stout one. Yeah, it is. Uh, the lingcod are really, really fun to catch. Uh, they're a kind of a prehistoric fish that uh, fights hard, it pulls hard. There are a lot of excitement, you know. They're, they're fun to catch. It's caught on light gear, light tackle, uh, so that works really well. One of the cool things fishing here in Alaska I noticed was, I mean, there's very little time spent where you're not bringing up a fish. This little spinning reel's taken a beating the last couple days. But I haven't, this one's snagged in the back. It's a large one. Oh no, it's a large one. Ow. A ling cod is actually not a cod, it's a type of wrasse. And when you think of wrasse, I don't think of anything that even resembles a ling. They look like a dragon. They're probably closer, if you were to look at them objectively, to an eel than they are a fish. They are just a big, nasty, toothy, prehistoric monster and an awesome fish to chase. Not bad yeah. for first thing in the morning. Look at that. Yeah. Look at the mouth on that thing. Could eat a basketball. Shit. All right, I'm gonna let this guy go. Go get him for another day. Oh. You know, being able to go offshore and have a very safe, clean, well-maintained boat with great gear 
and to keep this machine moving for only a hundred day season. You know, the rest of the time they can't even fish because the weather is so bad or it's so cold. It's really, what they do up here is, it's amazing. That's a dragon right there, boy. It's a nice fish. Look at down that hatch. That's why they can eat a four I mean, look, pound salmon. It's like a trash can. <laughs> it's a oh, garbage bag. Like, That's a five gallon bucket. They, they put on a world-class program year in, year out, in one of the hardest places you could possibly, you know, do that. There we go, triple. 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 Oh, there he is, the fish I've been waiting for. Oh, look at that guy. Big one. Let me get down there and grab him. That's the one I've been wanting. That is what I've been wanting to catch. Let's put this one away. Let's send him back down. Oh, yeah. Here you go. That's a good one, huh? That's a nice one. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, you got a nice one, too. I've always wanted to catch one of these. Just something about the coloration and the similarities to a grouper. Look at that. That's I mean, as Alaskan as it gets. We catch a lot of grouper, but we don't catch any with these colors. You know, I've only been to Seward as far as fishing towns in Alaska go, and it's definitely a small town. It's not a one horse town. It's probably a three horse town, but this place is built on one thing, you know, the, the benefits of the ocean and its rewards. I do the top fillet, down, and then You're not I... just gonna come into Alaska and jump on a boat and start taking clients out, and here I am, I'm here to start my charter operation. Alaska was always a dream. Um, I actually went to study forestry at Northern Arizona University. Purpose was to find a job in Alaska. Andy and Nick came up with Cracker Jack Sport Fishing together, and what they've done over the years is really bring a higher level of fishing to this area and they've worked together to really refine their fishery as a team. One of the cool things about Alaska and really the whole Pacific Northwest is the way that they see salmon as a resource that has to be both managed and supplemented. All right guys, um, welcome here. We're at uh, Trail Lakes Hatchery uh, just outside Moose Pass. We raise uh, 14 million sockeye salmon here every year. It's very commonplace you know, from basically Northern California all the way up to Alaska to have hatcheries. And they actually put these hatcheries usually in a river where the fish were already naturally spawning. So out of these fish, there's about 3 million here. Um, you can expect about usually 7 to 10% of them returning as adults. That just shows you both what a big business salmon is and what a big business to recreational fishing for salmon is. And these guys have really done a great job of managing this fishery for decades and decades. It's a really tight knit relationship between the nonprofits and the regional aquaculture association in the state and also uh, the Department of Fish and Game in Alaska. It's definitely not an independent uh, relationship. We work really hard together to make sure that everybody's got the best opportunity. I would say north of the border, including Canada and Alaska, they love their salmon fishing. What's up? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. Time to go fishing again. Let's roll. What's up, bud? Growing up, I always wanted to catch a big salmon. And for a couple of trips up here and to BC, I've caught some big salmon. I don't really like catching salmon that much. <laughs> but no trip up here is complete without catching a few, you know, and seeing what it's all about. And every time I do do it, I learn something. You know, these guys, they love their salmon fishing. And if nothing else, I gotta respect how dialed in they are. Okay, I'm gonna go to the back station so that we can uh, catch this bait, because there's a bunch of it here. The lure of the salmon fishing experience is really kind of putting it all together, like seeing the bait on the sounder and dropping the rig down and catching the bait they're feeding on, then setting the baits up so that they'll be you know, something that a salmon will eat. We're gonna run two divers off the back. It'll be a little shallower and the two downriggers a little deeper. Is a diver like a little plug? And no, a diver is like a planer board. We'll troll one bait and three lures to start with and see what happens. Now, are these what they refer to as the planing boards? No, this is a, this is a flasher here. This creates that rotation and it then forces the lure to have the same action as that. If the leader length is correct and it's the right length, 
as this thing rotates through the water and, and gets the light flashing. This looks like another salmon. Both Ali and Rush are great fishermen, but this is a different kind of fishing. It's almost like a combination of freshwater fishing with saltwater where there's more finesse and the rods are really flexible yeah. and the fish have a really soft mouth. Sometimes they get away. And so to be able to kind of show them how to do it and watch them progress over a couple hours to be able to do it, it's incredibly satisfying to do that. Lift up hard. Good. There you go. Now you trip the planer. Now it's just you and the fish. Quicker e, smooth and steady, big boy. You're not trying to tear his face off. Yeah, these ones have a really soft mouth. Yeah, be careful, Ollie. They're stronger than they look. Oh, Pollock. Oh, okay. right. All right. So walleye Pollock, or the leopard salmon, I like to call them. This is God, the... Everything up here is so well fed. Everything has a big old gut. Yep. This is the largest volume commercially caught food fish in the world. And what do they use it for? Um, they make the filet fish sandwich out of it, and surimi, the imitation crab meat, they catch them in the big trawlers in the Bering Sea by the millions of metric tons. I'm gonna let him go. He's grossing me out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never caught a salmon before. <laughs> you still have it. <laughs> <laughs> Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, Aftco, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. Here it comes. Watch this. He's coming in right now for it. Oh, yeah. They still don't look that big, Rush. <laughs> it's so awesome. Once you get here and see everything, start taking it all in, it really is breathtaking and you know i've heard talk to a lot of people who have been here i've heard the stories but it's just one of those places you really have to see for yourself to really take it all in oh yeah that's a nice one. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, man, he's, he's spicy huh yeah definitely you're right they do fight at the boat that's a really nice one let's walk back for me see if he's i don't think he's quite ready yet Oh, so your you just got to play them out, huh? Yeah, you just got to play them out like a freshwater fish almost. As far as the salmon fishing goes, there's five species available in Alaska or really anywhere in the Northwest. The king salmon obviously being the most desirable. They're the largest one, the most tenacious, kind of the most difficult to catch, sort of the unicorn of the bunch. The coho or silver salmon are incredibly abundant. They're what Seward's known for. Then we also have other species, the pink salmon, which is commercially important, which we often catch as bycatch salmon fishing. We seldom retain those, usually we release them. And then we get the chum or keta salmon. That, I have no idea how that is. I'm a saltwater fisherman to the core. These guys spend quite a bit of their life in the freshwater too. Do they? They're kinda, yeah, they're like halfway in between, you know? Got them. Nice. Nice silver. One of the reasons that we really like to come up here is simple. We like to eat delicious fish, and this place has got a lot of it on tap, and it's a kind of fish that we don't get at home. You know, one of the biggest benefits of coming up here on a trip is not only the scenery and the people and the food, but you're gonna go home with a big box of fish, and they take that product very seriously here. It's my first one, buddy. There you go. You know, as far as a destination spot for fishing, Alaska really surprised me, it really, it really stands alone. I mean, there's very few places that you can come and have the great fishing, where you're catching big fish uh, regularly. Well, that's a giant. Nice silver, beautiful. Look at that thing. I hate to admit it, I get a little excited because I think it's a big trout for a minute. Can we lift them up or, whoa, whoa. Just, just If you just keep them out of the motors, that would be awesome. That would be good. Yeah, we can get them whenever you're, ooh. What were you saying? Man, from the first minute we came here, we were treated like family. Nick and Andy have this fishery very dialed in. They've been fishing together for almost 20 years from two different boats, and, I, and they just have it really refined. 
Nice one. Nice. You can see the scales just coming off them. It's because they're so fresh right now. As the season wears on and they grow older, the scales get tighter and tighter on them. Oh, Because they're getting ready to go up the river, they sort of use it like armor when they get to go up in the river. Rub it on the rocks. Yeah, totally. Oh, very cool. I like catching salmon. If you've fished in a lot of places or you're looking to fish and travel, I think you get kind of roped into the Cabos and the warm weather and the margaritas and whatever. Don't overlook Alaska. There are so many things to do up here, from stream fishing, to lake fishing, to salmon fishing, bottom fishing. You've got scenery literally like nowhere else in the world. And the summers up here are beautiful, you know, and there's just so much to do, and you're gonna come home with some really good eating fish.